What's going on guys welcome back in today's video i'm going to show you how to build a simple http server in python and for this we essentially have two ways we can run a command in the command line that allows us to host an http server right away or we can write our own script and customize our http server in this video we're going to do both approaches and the first one is quite simple so we're going to start with that all we need to do here is we need to open up a terminal so on windows cmd or powershell or maybe the Windows subsystem for Linux. And on Linux and on Mac, you wanna use the terminal. And all you need to do here is you need to call your Python version. So Python, on Windows, you usually only have Python. On Linux and Mac, you have Python and Python 3. And then python -m -htp server. This is all you need to run. And if you press enter now, you can see that HTTP is serving on port 8000 and this is right now by default localhost so i can just go to the firefox browser and i can type localhost port 8000 like that um and it's usually a bit laggy there you go so right now you can see that it opens up the folder or the directory that i'm in so i can just stop this and i can navigate to the desktop for example and uh, maybe on a desktop, I can create a couple of more files. So for example, let's say, let's call this directory here, server, dear, like that. And then let's say I have a couple of text files or maybe source code or something. This is actually what I use the HTTP server for quite often. Maybe I have some files on this laptop here and I wanna transfer them to my second laptop. So all I do is I navigate to that directory, I open up an HTTP server and then I download the files from the other laptop. Of course, this only works if you have the server public or if it's in the same local area network. But let's say for example, this is test.txt. Maybe I also have um, some Excel worksheet, whatever. Let's call it test2 or whatever, t-test. Uh, and now I can navigate to the directory server dear and I can say again, python -m -http server. And if I now go to localhost, you can see that I'm in this directory, I cannot move up. Uh, and if I click on this file, for example, it's going to try to download it. I think text files are displayed actually. Um, so you can use that to just host your uh, HTTP server on one computer and then download files from the other computer. It's easier than using a flash drive or maybe if you don't want to use the cloud, you want to do all of this locally. This is a, uh, a good way to just quickly transfer files because you just need to host it real quick with one line, with one command, and then the other laptop is going to just uh, do, for example, wget and basically get the files, very simple. Or you can also use the browser as you can see. Uh, and of course you can specify a couple of things here. So for example, if I close this now and I rerun this command, by the way, you can close this with control C. Uh, if you rerun this command with a certain port number, so 9999, for example, this is now running on a different port. So now if I call this, uh, it's not gonna load because there's nothing hosted there. But if I type four times, oh, now I Googled. If I type four times nine, uh, this is going to work again. And of course, one thing that is important is if you want to host this in a network and you want other computers to be able to connect to it, they will not connect to localhost because localhost is your machine. If you want to connect to another computer, you need to specify their IP address. So what you need to do here is actually you need to find out your IP address by typing ipconfig and you need to be careful because if you have a couple of things installed here, for example, VirtualBox, uh, or VPN or something, you're going to have multiple IP addresses. Uh, what I'm interested in is the Ethernet adapter because I'm connected uh, using Ethernet and here I wanna have the IPv4 address. This is what you need to connect uh, or this is what the other computer needs to connect to this server. And of course, if I want this to be possible, I need to also host on this. So you need to copy this number and then you need to say again, python -m -http dot server maybe a port if you want to and then you can either say dash dash bind or just dash b and then the ip address so in this case 192.168.0.206 it's going to be different for you and 
Once you do that, you can see that now it's hosted on this address. So on, on this URL here, if you want, this is what the other computer needs to put into their browser in order to connect to your HTTP server. But of course, keep in mind, this only works locally. So you cannot connect to, these, uh, to this IP address right now because this is a private IP address. But I think as far as I know, localhost should now not work anymore. As you can see, you need to type the IP address. Okay, once again. And this should hopefully work. There you go. Now it works. Um, what's important here is that you cannot just host on any IP address. So I cannot just go ahead here and say bind this to uh, point 0.98, for example, because then it's going to give me an exception because I cannot bind to this IP address. I don't have this IP address. So the IP address that you bind to has to be actually this IPv4 address um, of your respective adapter. So this is how you do it in the command line. You can also do it in Python. And this is what we're going to take a look at next. All right, so let us now talk about how to put this in Python code. How can we build our own customized HTTP server? And essentially, we just use the same module HTTP.server. Um, but keep in mind that we're not building a REST API here. So we're not customizing a REST API here. If you want to learn how to build a REST API, I have two videos on this channel, one with fast API and one with uh, Flask, which is a Python web framework. Uh, here, we're just going to customize basic responses of a basic HTTP request handler. So in order to do this, we're just going to say from HTTP.server import HTTP.server, uh, not dot .server, HTTP server, and then base HTTP request handler. And we're going to define our own class, neural HTTP, for example. And this class is going to extend from the base HTTP request handler. And here we have some functions, some methods that we can now overwrite to uh, redefine the behavior. So one of them is do underscore get. So we need to add a def keyword here, do underscore get and self keyword. This essentially handles how we respond to get requests, obviously. So what I can do now is I can just say self dot send response with a certain code, for example, 200 for success or for okay. And then I can define a header as well. So send header. And for example, I want to change the content type to text HTML because I'm going to just return a web page. Then we're going to end the headers. And then we're going to say self dot w file dot write. And in here, we're going to pass bytes. And these bytes are going to have a certain encoding. This encoding is going to be UTF eight. And then the code is going to be HTML, HTML, body, we're not going to have a hat body like that. And a simple large heading with Hello World like that. And of course, you can customize the behavior here, you can make it more complex, you can trigger certain scripts, you can even work with AI if you want to, if you have a reason to do that. Uh, essentially, what happens when you make a get request is up to you, you can define it in that function. So you can build a complex classifier. And when you call this URL here, when you when you make a get request on the HTTP server, it's going to return the classification of an image or something. So you can define the behavior however you want. In this case, we're just going to return Hello World. Um, and actually, once we have that, all we need to do is we need to say server equals HTTP server. And we pass here a host and port that we need to define. We're going to do this up here. Let's say host, or actually, let's, let's use uppercase for constant. The host is going to be 192.168.0.206. And a port is going to be four nines. So we're now going to say host port and we need to specify what server we're going to run. So um, what class we're going to use and this is going to be neural HTTP. And then we essentially say server dot serve forever. And then server dot server close. And we can also print a message here. 
server now running. And of course, you can also say on host, on port, whatever. And when we're done, we're going to print server stopped. There you go. So we can now try to run this. We're going to right click the file here and we're going to run main. And if we didn't make any mistakes, we should now be able to access this side here and you can see hello world. Now, if you want to play around uh, with different requ request type, what you what you can do is you can use curl. So you can just open up another command line and you can use curl. Now on Windows, I think it's pre-installed on Linux systems sometimes as well. Otherwise, you just install curl. It's a command line tool and you can just specify here 192.168.0 and 206. And this makes, of course, I need to specify the port. Uh, how does it work in curl like that? How do you specify a curl port? Let's Google. We're going to take the time now here. How do you specify this? Um, actually like that. So maybe I messed up something else. It connects to 8,000. Oh, yeah, of course I messed up something. I typed 8,000, even though it's four times nine. Okay, now it works. So you can see we get hello world as a response here. Um, and if I want to specify a method, so if I want to do a post request instead of a get request, what I need to do is I need to say dash X, so capital X and post. And then you're going to get in this case, error response because it's unsupported because we don't have uh, anything implemented here. And if we want to implement something, all we need to do is we need to add an additional function here, additional method, do underscore post. And here we can do the same thing. We can say self dot, uh, actually not that, self dot send response again 200. And this time we're going to set the header to content type application slash JSON. So we're going to send a JSON dictionary type of object self and headers like that. And then, uh, for example, we can we can just go with a timestamp, we can just print the current date and time. I think for this, we're going to need the time module. <clears throat> we can say uh, date equals time dot strf time. So string format time. And what we're going to do here is we're going to specify the format year. Then uh, let me see what I have prepared here. So year, month, day, and then essentially hour, minute, and second like that. And the time is the time dot local time of time dot time, which is the current moment. And this is what we're going to return as a JSON object. So we're going to say self dot W file write, and we're going to write a simple, of course, we're going to use bytes again. And we're going to use UTF dash eight again. And here we essentially just specify, I think we cannot use single quotations in a JSON file, can we? Let's just use single quotations here. And double quotations here. So we're going to say time is essentially, um, we got to make this an F string. This is going to be date. There you go. So now if we make a post request, we should get this JSON object. So you can try again, we can reload the page, we still get a hello world because the browser by default is sending a get request. If we now use curl, we can see that if we do get we still get this if we do post like that, uh, we get nothing. This is not good. Why do we get nothing? Let's see why we get nothing. Um, oh, we need to escape this here. Does it work like that? Because these curly brackets are important for um, for the F string, but they're also important for JSON. So maybe that's causing a problem. Let's see if this changed now. No, it still doesn't work. What do we get here? Format specifier. How did I do this here? 
Okay, we're going to do it in a different way. We're not going to use f strings. We're just going to say this and then we're going to use plus um, like that. Or actually, we need to use these quotation marks here. There you go. Date and then plus. And this year. And of course, don't forget to pass the UTF dash eight. And now one additional bracket and we should be good to go. Come on. Don't get on my nerves. There you go. So let's see if it now works. post request, there you go, we get this JSON object here with a time and uh, with the respective timestamp off right now, 12 o'clock, 23 minutes. Um, and we can now still go ahead and do a get request. And we can try also a put request. And then we're going to get again, not implemented. If I do it like that. Um, if you don't want to use curl in the command line, you can also use postman. So postman is a tool <clears throat> that we can use in in the browser in order to send requests. So if I now run this here, uh, as far as I know, postman is free, at least uh, there is a free version of it. So we can just right click open postman. And we can then send some requests. So you can send post requests, you can also send some payload. Um, but essentially, it takes a while to load does essentially the same thing that curl does, but with a graphical user interface. So I can create a new request here, HTTP request. And I can say I want to send a request to 192.168.0.206 port 9999. And um, yeah, I essentially want to just send nothing. And if I send a get request, I'm going to get uh, this HTTP, uh, HTML site. And if I send a post request like that, I'm going to get a JSON object with a time. So you can also use Postman if you want to. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and 